Now let's have a look at creating a custom Azure Linux policy. Now next to protecting your system against unconfined users by simply mapping them to, uh, to a confined Azure Linux user, we're also able to protect our system against unconfined applications by creating a custom Azure Linux policy for that particular application. We know that services like SSHD, HTTPD, for example, are confined by locking them into their own private domains, which they cannot break out of. But what about a new application that you install? This will by default be unconfined. Well, you can create a custom policy that will confine the application to its own domain so that it can only access its own objects and you prevent it from accessing objects that you do not want it to access. So if the application gets hijacked, only the objects in the application's domain will be accessible based upon the context type. And the way we will demo that is by running a very tiny C program as a systemd service that opens a user's log file for writing every five seconds. So by confining the daemon to its own domain, we'll prevent it from accessing objects that do not live in the created domain. We'll first create the program and put it in its place, and then we'll make it into a systemd service. Uh, we'll test the service and see that there's no restriction on opening the log file for writing. Then we'll create a custom policy for that particular service using ESI policy generate and inspect the rules that are created. We'll compile it and load the policy. Then we'll use ESI manage to set the context types for the daemon as well as for the log file and then we check if everything is okay. Now, before we start, you can create a policy completely from scratch. That's a lot of work. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to start with a simpler method, which is using the se policy generate command. And that will generate the necessary files. And then we run a script that will install the module so that we can start testing. And we'll change it a couple of times to fine tune it. And then we'll be done. Now I'm logged into my system, which in this case is Fedora. And first I create a user called myapp where we create our log file. Uh, so we create a log file in the login directory of my app and the context type is user underscore home underscore t. This is something we have to change later on. Now let's create a tiny C program that will become our service. And as I said, it's not going to be a very useful program, but it will suffice to demonstrate. So it will open the my app log file for writing every five seconds. And that is all that it will do. So we save the file and compile it like this. And we copy it to uh, user local bin. And when we check the context type, we see that it's of the type bin underscore t, which is also something that we will have to change later on. Now to make this into an actual service, we create a unit file in libsystemd system and call it myAppService. This is also very basic. So we set the executable to myapp in user local bin. And when we stop the service, it will simply kill the process. So we save the file and enable and start the service just to test it. And we see it's active and running, so our service is functioning properly. Now let's run audit search to check the access vector cache for the myapp daemon. And we see there are no matches, so no denials of any kind for our service. Everything is fine. And when we check the context type of our daemon, it's of the type unconfined service underscore d. So that has to change as well. So let's stop the service and concentrate on the policy we need to make. As agreed, we're going to use se policy generate and the dash dash init simply means that it's for the init daemon, so systemd. And the binary is use local bin myapp uh, and it should be able to open the log file for writing. And that will generate our policy, which we will uh, have a closer look at. And so it lists the generated files and we see a type enforcement file, an interface file, a file context file, and a spec file and a setup script. And in this case, we're only interested in the first and the last, so the TE file and the script. So let's open myapp.te in VI and get rid of these comments. Of course, they're very explanatory because they tell us what the type declarations are that we use, and it also shows us the rules in the policy. But we want to have all in one view, uh, so we get rid of them. And then we can have a closer look. So first it declares that there will be some types that will all fit in the domain that my app will be part of. So the domain is the init underscore daemon domain, which is represented as the my app type. And it will use my app underscore exec for the daemon and my app read write for the files. So to make a long story short, we will need to change the context types of the my app binary as well as of the log file in the my app login directory. 
Now we shouldn't skip the permissive myapp underscore t line because it's there on purpose to let us further configure the service whilst it's running without actually denying anything. So it's like setting the service into permissive mode while testing. We should not forget to get rid of this line once we're done testing. And in the rest of the policy we see the permissions that the MyApp daemon will get to work with the files on disk based on the context types that will be accessible by the MyApp daemon. So you can say that MyApp exec is allowed to access the files of the MyApp read write type. So we save the file and now we run the script that will compile the policy and load it using the ESI module command. And after it's done, we check whether our policy has actually been loaded, and we're very happy. OK, now we're well on the way, and we start the service again. And we check and see that it runs nicely. But keep in mind, we're running in permissive mode, so nothing is actually denied because of that. So let's run audit search again to check for denials. And lo and behold, there are denials. What it tells us is that based upon the discretionary access settings, so DAC, read and search, our daemon is prevented from accessing the MyApp login directory to get to the log file in there. So we could change the permissions on the directory to set it open, but we can also add a rule to the policy to make as a Linux ignore the permission settings. We can use audit to allow to see what these rules should be. And it tells us that we should use DAC, read, search and dir search to allow. The easiest way of doing that is by appending the output of the audit to allow command to the myapp.te file and then recompile and load again. We run the exact same command, uh, but now we append the output to the myapp.te file. And we check the file, and all the way at the bottom, uh, we see that there is these two rules that were suggested by audit to allow. And we save the file again and recompile. But unfortunately, in order to be able to allow the suggested actions, it needs an additional type declaration in the policy. So it fails to compile the policy. Uh, so what it needs is the user underscore home underscore dir type, because that's the login directory of the MyApp user, which is not part of the policy. Now, since this is an external type, which is not part of the MyApp domain, we need to load it from an external source. And we can do that by creating a require block that will load the type so that our policy can use it. So we edit the file once more, and right underneath the first line, we add this require block, which will initiate an external load of the, uh, of the type that is not native to the domain. And then we save the file and run the myapp.sh script again, and now it is all successful. Now the last thing we'll need to do is to set the correct context types for the binary and the file. We could use Chicon for that, but that would only last until the next relabel. So we better set it permanently and then manually relabel. So we use ESI manage F context to change the label for the myapp binary, and we of course also change the label for the log file in the myapp login directory. And after that, we'll have to uh, actually run restore con to relabel these two files. And of course, we check whether the labels are actually set. So we list the label for the log file and we list the label for the binary. And we see that they're both relabeled because of the context change. Now, finally, we uh, run the status of the MyApp service and it says it's OK, but we have not yet removed the permissive line in the TE file. So we open the file once more and comment out the permissive line so that it will be the real deal from now on. So we save it and run the MyApp script again to recompile and reload. And we start our service and run audit search again. And this TS recent means that it only checks the last 10 minutes. Now we still see denials, but these are old. So after 10 minutes, we run audit search once more and it says there are no matches, so no denials, and we have successfully implemented our own custom uh, policy.